Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the iPhone 13 Pro. As you can see, it's the gold color, but it also comes in silver, graphite, and a new Sierra Blue. Now this starts at the same price as last year, $999 in the United States. That will get you 128 gigabytes of storage, and then you can go all the way up to one terabyte of storage for $1,499. So there's a huge amount of storage options this year. You have four, 128, 256, 512, and one terabyte. Now let's go ahead and unbox this and take a closer look. So as you can see, it's the gold color and let's pull off the little pull tabs here to remove the, the top of the box and they're reducing plastic even further this year. So the box apparently has less plastic in it. So we'll take the top off and it doesn't slide off with a suction like previous years. And here you can see the gold color and the gold really makes the camera module stand out. I'll compare that in a moment with others, but we'll go around this in a moment. But inside the box, you've got your USB-C to lightning cable, as you can see here. So USB-C to lightning, and you also have your typical paperwork with a SIM card removal tool, a little warranty and safety and handling, as well as your Apple sticker. Now there is no charger in the box and that's where today's channel partner comes in who sponsored this video. So if you need a charger, Anchor Nano Pro really is one of the better ways to go. As you can see, this is incredibly small. It's 45% smaller than Apple's stock charger, charges at 20 watts, so about 50% in 25 minutes, and it uses Anchor's patented Active Shield to monitor temperature and adjust current to make sure the phone doesn't get too hot. It has four different colors, glacier blue, cool lavender, arctic white, and black ice. It also includes Anchor's patented Power IQ 3.0 to work flawlessly with your new iPhone or other devices. I'll leave a link to them in the description below and thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. So we'll put the box away here and let's take a closer look at the phone itself. Let's remove the front covering off the display. And as you can see, we have the gold color around the outside edge. So very similar to the colors last year. Now, as far as a comparison with the iPhone 12 Pro, you can see the camera module is very different. It looks huge on the 13 Pro, and that's because there's no compromises this year with the camera. There's no downgrade just by getting the Pro versus the Pro Max. You get the exact same cam camera setup and modules and everything else we'll talk more about in a moment. If we look at the sides here, you can see that they've moved the power sleep wake button to make different room for internals since they've changed that quite a bit. And they've also moved the millimeter wave antenna down a little bit. So the power sleep wake is down and millimeter wave, but the antenna lines are there as well. On the top, there's nothing really different, but you can definitely see the camera module difference there. So on the other side, you can see the same thing. They've moved the silent switch and volume buttons down, and they've also relocated the SIM card tray. So it's all been moved around just a little bit. Then also on the bottom here, it looks the same as well. So it's basically the same layout with lightning also. Now, as far as the overall weight, there is definitely a weight difference between the two. So the weight of them is significantly heavier with the new phone. You definitely can feel it. It's 7.199 ounces or 204 grams versus 6.66 ounces or 189 grams. So it's a, almost an ounce more or so. It's definitely noticeable. And the top is pretty heavy due to those cameras. Now, as far as the notch this year, let me turn on the new phone so we can see the notch a little bit more prominently here. So we'll turn it on and let me line it up with last year's phone so you can see the notch. Now, as you can see, the notch is definitely smaller this year. It's narrower, but it may stick into the display a little bit further than it did before. So there's definitely a difference there. And when I put these side by side, it definitely seems like the new phone is a little bit thicker and most definitely sticks up further because the camera bump is so much larger. So as you can see, it sticks up quite a bit and is definitely a thicker phone, but that adds to better things such as battery life. This year we have a battery that should add about an hour and a half of battery over the previous model. So if you were happy with battery life on the iPhone 12 pro, you'll be even happier with this one. Now there's a lot to talk about with this new display and we'll check PWM and things later, but let's go ahead and I'll get this set up and then we'll take a closer look. So I've put in my passcode and I've connected the account to my phone. So we'll wait for this to set up 
And internally this year, we have the new A15 Bionic CPU. So it's a new six core CPU with two performance cores and four efficiency cores, and also a new five core GPU. It's an extra core compared to the 13 and the 13 mini. So it's a little bit of extra power for the pro models. It also has a new 16 core neural engine and six gigabytes of Ram. So they haven't increased the Ram this year. Now let's go ahead and set up face ID. We'll get that set up and we'll just move around. There we go. We'll do it again. And there face ID is set up pretty simple. We'll hit continue. Now it's asking if I want to transfer my data, I'm just going to set it up as new this time around just to get to the home screen. So we'll give it a moment. We have to agree to the terms and conditions and now it says setting up your Apple ID. So we're waiting for that. So now it's asking if I want to transfer apps and data, I'm going to set it up as new, like I said before, so I won't transfer anything at this time. Now it says, make this your new iPhone. And it's just showing if there's backups or your different settings that you can change here or customize your settings or just continue with what you have. So we'll hit continue. Now it's asking if I want to participate in the Apple beta software program, since the previous device had that installed, I'm going to hit don't continue on this beta program but you have the option here, which is nice. And now it says, welcome to iPhone. So now we're at the home screen. So let's check a couple different things. We'll go to settings, just see what version is installed on this. So we'll hit not now. And you can see we have iOS 15 pre-installed. And if we tap on it, we have build number 19, a three, four, one. So if we go back, we should have a software update. It seems like it shipped with the release candidate. So when you get your new phone, you'll probably want to update to this newest version, or it may prompt you to do that as well. Now let's go ahead and check the wallpaper since we should have some new ones with this device. So we'll go to choose new wallpaper and we'll go to live and you can see there's four new ones. Now these are specific to the pro. They won't be on any other models. Even the 12 pro max won't have them, but if you tap on them, they are live wallpapers and they move. If we go to the gold one that matches this phone, you'll see there that it moves. We can hit set. And now it matches the phone. It goes with the gold color, but of course you could change it to whatever you'd like. So again, we have the pinkish purple and red one, and then also the green and blue one. So you can pick whatever one you like. I actually like the blue one quite a bit. So now I'm using the blue one. So now we have that live wallpaper. And of course you can access that on the home screen as well. If you want to use the live wallpaper. So let me flip this over to do not disturb. And let's take a closer look at this display because this is the 120 Hertz pro motion display that is super smooth. I used it a little bit on the pro max. And if we go back here, it's just incredibly smooth. And if I bring in the 12 pro, let me show you what it's like side by side. So if I scroll side by side and I'll show it to you at 240 frames per second, so you can see the difference. And as you can see, it's just incredibly smooth on the new 13 pro. You can see the difference at higher frame rates and you can notice it when just using it regularly and scrolling through things. Now we do have the option to turn off ProMotion if we don't want to use it and we can go to settings and then we'll go down to accessibility and then under motion, you'll see it says limit frame rate sets the maximum frame rate of the display to 60 frames per second. Now that will help with battery, but Apple manages it now by going from 120 Hertz to down to 10 Hertz. So what that does is maybe you're on a settings page. It doesn't need that high frame rate. It will limit it on, on displays to save power. Now at other times when you're watching a movie, if it's 24 frames per second, it will shift the display refresh rate to 24 frames per second. So it's intelligent and really can adjust to save power as needed. Now the specs are the same this year as well, as far as the overall size and resolution, 6.1 inch super retina XDR. It's also an OLED panel. It's 2,532 by 1,170 with 460 pixels per inch. However, it can go to a thousand nits brightness in regular use. So it can go super bright. You won't even be able to see it properly on the screen here, and it can go up to 1200 nits peak brightness, just like it could last year. It has HDR true tone and ceramic shield, which seems to be holding up pretty well after using the other phones with it for a year. 
we still have haptic touch. I don't think we'll see 3d touch anytime soon. So if we go and maybe haptic press on settings, we still have that option. So nothing there has changed, but we do have that pro motion, which is really nice. Now the tone of the display is a little bit different. It seems like it's a little cooler this year. Now it was very warm last year and some people didn't like that. So both of these displays have true tone turned off or no, that's on the new phone. There we go. We'll turn it off and you can see the difference in the display overall. So we're at similar brightnesses and the displays, at least on this display looks very similar. However, if we turn on true tone, you can see the 12 pro looks a lot warmer and almost has a yellowish tint to it. So there's definitely a difference as far as that goes. I think the newer displays are much better that way. Also, the other thing is PWM. That's how it controls brightness. Now I was not able to detect that on the 13 pro max and normally you'll detect that by going in and going to slow motion and then going to 240 frames per second and seeing if you can see it. So I'll hit record. We can see if we detect any flicker or anything else. Now it could be at such a high rate that you just don't detect it. So you can see it a little bit in settings, but not so much on the home screen. So I don't know if it's just flickering a little bit differently or it's at such a high rate, you can't see it, but hopefully that means that it's much easier on your eyes this year. So in general, it seems like it's going to be a better display all around. Now the cameras this year have an improvement. Now the forward facing camera is the same camera as last year, but they've just relocated it since they've moved the speaker to the top due to the smaller notch, the camera is now to the left. And then you have all of the different sensors and things for face ID to the right of it. So this is a 12 megapixel F 2.2 camera that can record 4k 60 in HDR. So it can use Dolby vision HDR. Now the rear cameras are the biggest change this year. We have no compromises between the 13 pro and the 13 pro max. And you have the same sensor shift stabilization that we had introduced last year with the 12 pro max. We have a telephoto F 2.8. We have a wide F 1.5 to let in a lot of light and an ultra wide f 1.8 we also have the capability of three times optical zoom and up to six times digital zoom 4k dolby vision hdr a new cinematic mode and macro modes as well as well as smart hdr4 that can recognize up to four people so we have all of those things built in so let's go ahead and take a look at the camera settings so if we go into camera i'll bring in the 13 pro max behind it so we can see the differences but we'll go to photographic styles which is new this year you can set the camera default to have the standard iPhone look. Maybe you want it to have a little more contrast or maybe more vibrant or warm or have a cool style to it. You can use whichever one you like. And if you want to change it later on, tap the arrow, then tap this button here and you can change the tone and warmth to your liking. So if we flip this or we'll move this out of the way, we'll bring in the screen of the 12 pro. So you can see that a little better as I switch between the modes, you can see the very different changes to the camera and you can adjust this how you'd like. So if you want vibrant, you can adjust the tone. So maybe we want it to be a little bit more like that. And then we want it to be either cooler or warmer and it will change and keep that setting for you if you want to use that in the future. So that's a new feature there. You also have new cinematic video modes, which record in 1080p HDR and it will show you the screen, but you won't be able to see it well because it's so bright in HDR. Let me see if I bring this down and it helps, but this is cinematic mode and it will detect people. And when you're turning away from them or turning back, it will automatically detect your face. And I'll be testing this out further in the review video, but it's a nice feature, but it is only 1080p, but it is HDR as well. Now, one of my favorite modes is the new macro mode. So let me turn the brightness back up here so you can see the screen and macro mode lets me get very close to maybe the phone and it will switch. So I can get really close there. We'll take a photo and it will do that automatically. So where you can see the pixels. Now, if I bring in a cloth, we can get really close to that as well. And you can see the fibers in the cloth. So we'll go back. And as I get close, you can see a switch to macro. There's a switch. We go back and let's see how close we can get to those fibers. So we can get a couple centimeters away or so about an inch away. And now you can see the fibers in that maybe using deep fusion or more, but you can see the detail in the fiber of the microfiber cloth behind me. It's incredible the amount of detail this can pick up. So it has all of that built in. Now the phone is getting a bit warm after I just set it up. It's not hot, but it is quite warm to the touch. So the processing of the 
photos and things probably uses a lot of power. That's typical, but the phone is getting a little bit warm. I'm not sure how it will sustain the brightness outside as I know that was a bit of an issue for the previous generation phone. So we'll have to test that out later on when we're outdoors more. Now, as far as 5G, it's enhanced around the world. So you do get more 5G capability, but not millimeter wave everywhere. So it just depends where you live. And then you have the same thing as last year, 802.11 AB, GN, and AX Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 6, as well as Bluetooth 5.0. So you have all of that capability built in. None of that has really changed too much. Now, as far as the RAM built in, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we'll load up Geekbench here, and you can see it says 5.56 gigabytes. So it is in fact six gigabytes of RAM on this phone. And then also some people were asking, does this notch protrude down enough to cut into videos that are formatted in widescreen? So I thought we'd test that out along with the speakers. So we'll go into YouTube. So the first thing I noticed on YouTube, this is one of my iPhone comparison videos. You can see the notch does protrude into an 18 by nine aspect ratio a little bit. So it does protrude ever so slightly. If I zoom in here, you can see the notch zoom back out. It does stick into that side just a little bit. So that's a little disappointing. If you like to watch these videos, that may be something to consider. Now let's take a listen to the speakers as well. So I'll move the microphone here so you can hear it better. So you heard the speakers and we got about to 80 decibels or so measured by the watch. So I'm not sure how accurate that is, but the speakers go nice and loud and seem to have a great stereo sound. The location of the new speaker at the top doesn't seem to make a difference as far as that goes. So the phone overall seems really nice. Let's just take a quick look at the magnets, see if they're any different than what we had before. So we'll set this down. And this is magnet paper. I've showed it in every iPhone video that I've done unboxings for, and this gives you an idea of the overall layout. They've made a change to what seems to be the microphone here. The magnets are a little bit different, but MagSafe in general seems to be about the same. And if we go up to the cameras, you can see the sensor shift stabilization with the ultra wides and everything else. So we should have a much nicer camera, better ultra wide. And of course I'll test that out in future in the future. So that's it for the iPhone 13 Pro, and I may be using the 13 Pro as my main phone this year, mainly due to its lack of compromises other than battery and screen size. Everything else is the same. In fact, I'm using the rear camera of the iPhone 13 Pro Max to record this video without any external microphone or anything to give you a general idea of what it's like. I think the cameras are incredible, and the beginning of this video was also recorded with the 13 Pro Max, but with an external microphone. So it gives you a general idea of what the cameras are capable of. Now, if there's anything you'd like to know about the 13 Pro that you want me to cover in the review that you haven't seen elsewhere, let me know in the comments below. And if you need a charger, be sure to check out Anchor Nano Pro, again linked in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.